Silver had hit a peak just above around 30, pulled back, and then in May shot up to 32.75. So it was even stronger than gold following that March annual momentum breakout that we had on the miners in silver and gold. <clears throat> and in fact, if you go back and measure year to date, measure from a February low, which was a pullback low in all the metals, silver's way up more on a percent basis than gold is, despite its recent pullback. Even with the pullback, you're still up more than gold is measured from those pivot points. And so are miners, by the way. <clears throat> so we've seen a shift in these initial three months of that surge, you know, March, April, May, June, okay, boom, 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 uh, where it sort of shocked people. But something had changed in the tenor and tone of the market. You know, what they'd been used to is a trading market where you could, you could apply all your little simple uh, on-your-screen trading tools trade in and trade out, trade in and trade in. It was, it was a range-bound, happy situation. Today, we're diving deep into an insightful discussion by renowned market analyst Michael Oliver on the bull market trends in gold and silver. If you're an investor or just curious about precious metals, you won't want to miss this detailed breakdown. Don't forget to subscribe, like, and comment below with your thoughts. Michael Oliver begins by highlighting the inception of the current bull market in gold and silver which started from a bear low in December 2015. At that time, gold was priced at $1,050. He emphasizes that bull markets in gold typically last around a decade, contrary to the misconception that they last only two to three years. This historical perspective sets the stage for understanding the longevity and potential of the current market trends. Oliver draws parallels with past bull markets, such as the one from 2020-11, which lasted 11 years. He goes back further to the mid-1970s when gold was in the $30 range and traces its journey to its peak in 1980. He emphasizes that understanding these historical patterns is crucial for predicting future trends. What can the bull markets of the past teach us about the future of gold and silver? Let's delve into some historical insights. In December 2015, when gold was at its lowest, Oliver's Market Studies Analysis MSA identified a significant change. Two months after this low, MSA reported that they were no longer bearish on gold. This shift was driven by annual momentum analysis, which indicated a strong base despite a bearish price chart. By analyzing each month's action in relation to a 36-month average, they observed a bullish momentum base, leading to a significant price surge. The initial rally off the December 2015 low saw gold surge from $1,050 to wedding $360 within a few months marking a strong comeback. This was followed by a period of sideways movement between $1,350 and just under $1,800. Another significant rally began in early 2020, peaking at $2,070. However, this rally was followed by a sharp correction in October 2022, where gold dropped to around $1,615. Oliver notes that despite the bearish price chart, momentum indicators suggested it was merely a correction, not a top. By March 2024, gold's annual momentum had broken through a long-standing ceiling, marking a significant shift. While gold prices appeared irregular, momentum analysis showed a clear upward trend. This breakout was mirrored in the performance of gold miners and silver, both of which had lagged but showed similar momentum structures. The bull market in gold and silver began from a bear low in December 2015. Okay. Gold then was 1,050. Okay. And most of the gold bull markets, if you go back in 50 years and look at them, they, they last, you know, either side of a decade. So it's not like, oh, two, three years, there's your bull market. Uh, yeah, there you go. And anyway, the, you can see that the one in 2000 ran up to 2011, There's 11 years there. OK, uh, and you don't go quite, quite far enough on the 1980 peak, but you can go back to the mid 70s and see gold was in the 30s. Okay? Now, here we have a situation where we started from 1050. December 2015. Now, when we first came off that low, yeah, right there, you know, two months after that low, MSA put out a report saying, we're no longer bearish. We got bearish in uh, January of 2012, by the way, no, way up three months after the high. Anyway, annual momentum of gold, not the price chart. Price chart was make it a low, it looked like hell. You know, it's going down forever. Uh, annual momentum of gold where we measure each month's action in its relationship to above or below a 36-month average 
had created a structure that if you looked at the momentum chart, you'd say, wow, what a base. Whereas when you look at gold, it was just descending, but all momentum, it was this for a couple of years flat. When we broke out, we gushed. We had a bias in 1140. We gushed up to 1360 in a matter of a few months. That was like the first, I'm back. Okay. Uh, gold saying, I'm back. Okay. That was that first rally off that low. Yep. Then he went, what, sideways for a couple of years there between 1350 and back under 1200. And then you took off again and you ran up to the 2020 high when you get up to 2070, I think it was, uh, yeah, March of uh, summer of 2000. No, yeah, no, in early 2020, you got up to 2070 again. Uh, <clears throat> and you, what'd you do? You topped out. You had a flush out back into October of 2022, where you went down that, that last little spike down there, in October 2022, that went to $1,615 or so. I remember and those days as well, quite quite yeah. a ways we've come since then. Now, when you look at a price chart, you blew out a bunch of horizontal lows. So you think, oh, it's all over. You'd have a top completed because the price chart says so. Momentum said, no, it's not a top. It's merely a clean out correction. And we V-bottomed off that low. And next thing you know, you're back over 2,000 again. Okay. And then what do you do? You labor again. Okay. You know, the 2,000 crowds up there still sell and think it's going to last forever as a top. <clears throat> this time, instead of falling apart, you went horizontal either side of 2,000. And then uh, late 23, you shot up again. And then finally, in March of 2024, this year, gold on annual momentum had developed a range of action that had prevailed from that 2020 high through early 2024. You don't see it on price. Price is irregular. But on momentum, there was a nice flat ceiling. And you blew through it coming up in March of 2024. Now, at the same time, though, the lagged gold miners, which had not gone sideways, they'd gone down during those years, and silver, which had gone down from 2021 high to 2023, had the same type of structure on annual momentum that gold had, meaning an, an easily definable square range. And they both broke out the same time as gold, basically late March. At that time, our buy signal on silver was 25 17, I think it was. It was if you close a month above that, you're gone. Well, that didn't mean anything on a price chart of silver because you'd had plenty of highs up 26, 27, 28. <clears throat> but in uh, March, yeah, you can see, uh, you go back to August, it looks like uh, 20. Go back a little there. farther out. Yeah. yeah, there you go. Uh, you see the multiple highs that are the cluster just above 25. Actually, you've got, those are, must be weekly closes, but most of those highs actually intra week were 26 plus. Okay. Came up through 25 and you gushed up over 30. Pull back and then you shot up to 32.75 while gold was still going sideways, starting from April, May, June, and July, either side of 3,400, I mean 2,400, excuse me. Silver had hit a peak just above around 30, pull back and then in May shot up to 32.75. So it was even stronger than gold following that March annual momentum breakout that we had on the miners in silver and gold. <clears throat> and in fact, if you go back and measure year to date, measure from a February low, which was a pullback low in all the metals, silver's way up more on a percent basis than gold is, despite its recent pullback. Even with the pullback, you're still up more than gold is measured from those pivot points. And so are miners, by the way. <clears throat> so we've seen a shift in these initial three months of that surge, you know, March, April, May, June. Okay, boom, 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 uh, where it sort of shocked people. But something had changed in the tenor and tone of the market. You know, what they'd been used to is a trading market where you could, you could apply all your little simple uh, on-your-screen trading tools to trade in and trade out, trade in and trade in. It was, it was a range-bound, happy situation. But what happened in March said, no, it's over. As far as we're concerned, it's a, it's over. The range bound stuff is over. The pause, the multi-year pause in the bull trend is over. We're resuming an aggressive bull trend. We went back and researched <clears throat> the action that silver and gold had, especially silver focused on it right now because we it's the leader in terms of percent gain. What happened to silver in the 79 to 80 blow off phase 
which again was the latter part, the last year of that bull market that had already been going on for, you know, since the mid 70s. Silver, often considered gold's counterpart, has shown even stronger performance since its March 2024 breakout. From a February low, silver has outpaced gold in percentage gains despite recent pullbacks. This resurgence indicates a shift in market dynamics, with both silver and gold miners performing robustly. Oliver draws comparisons to the late stages of past bull markets, particularly focusing on silver's explosive moves in 1979 to 1980 and 2010 to 2011. He highlights how these final phases saw massive accelerations in price and momentum, defying traditional market rules and leading to vertical price increases. Reflecting on recent market behavior, Oliver notes that while gold has seen sideways movements since April 2024, this is not indicative of a market top. Instead, it mirrors past periods where markets refresh themselves through sideways action before resuming their upward trends. What happened to silver in late 2010, gushing it up into early 2011, when silver reached 50. Okay, silver actually hit a high in 2011 before gold did later on in September. Right. But that gushing move that we saw in silver in those final handful of months of those already aged bull trends was a massive acceleration of price and momentum, where all the old rules throw them out the window. It just went vertical. You know, silver went from the teens to 50, 20 to 50, et cetera, and did it in a matter of three months or so. Actually, what the acceleration phase in both cases lasted about three quarters. So what happened was, and we, we're already into that process as far as we're concerned. Pardon me if I'm getting long-winded here. <laughs> no, no. Um, it started when we broke out in late March. So let's say April, May, June, you had a surge, especially April, May. You had a big price surge in gold and the miners and in silver. And then you had, if you look at, look at gold, it paused in April and May, and then June is a waste of time. And so far, July is still around 2,400. So there's been several months of sideways price action. Yeah, there, there you go. Now, if you can see silver there, You've been in this range, what is this, daily or weekly? This must be daily, I think. Uh, um, yes. But you, yet since May, you'll notice that we've gone really sort of sideways. In other words, you made a high, but you really haven't collapsed. They tried to. They tried to collapse it, but it then came back up again. You know, it's like, you know, you beat me in the head and I come back up. This is not behaving in any way, even on a price chart, like a top in gold or silver. Normally when gold makes a top or silver makes a top that, that's meaningful and you get a real pullback, you don't come back to that high again. Once you make it, you drop hard and then maybe you have a reach back attempt, but you don't go back to the high again. In gold's case, you made a new high. In silver's case, you went back to 32 again two weeks ago, top dollar tick. Uh, and they sold it again, 32. Let's sell 32 forever. Okay, right. Okay. This is exactly what happened in the mid phase of the acceleration process in 1979, after the first gush up that said, okay, I'm accelerating, you had a three month pause. What happened during that three months is the following. Price went into an up down range. In the case of silver, it was a 15% range, top tick to bottom tick of the range. And 2010, December and January of 2010 and 11, silver also went into a range bound situation. And Michael, and, I, I have those charts yeah. up here as well. So okay. here's, here's 1970, we have 1980 and 2011. Okay, right what you've got, yeah, okay. Um, see that clump of ink around either side of 17, 18 bucks there? This is daily, obviously. You'll see you rushed really. up big time from late August, you rushed up to October. And then uh, September, yeah, early October, made a high, backed off, made a marginally high. But for October, November, and December, you went sideways. Not a top. Again, you, they tried to beat it, but it wouldn't collapse. And when you oscillate that on monthly momentum, which we take each month's bar and measure it versus a three-month average, what you had is you had a market that got extremely overbought in that, in that initial wave of the acceleration phase, namely here from August through October. And it wanted to correct. Momentum wanted to correct. Price said, okay, I'm going to let you correct. What happened, you see there is price going sideways, but momentum had a sharp pullback and pullback to the three-month average area, 
the rising three-month average, a fairly intermediate metric, okay? So you cooled off from vastly overbought readings to more or less what you'd call neutral, non-overbought momentum readings. In other words, the market was refreshing itself. And in so doing, it bored everybody for three months and they thought, that's oh, a top, that's a top, that's a top. It's when it came up out of that range in early in December, you exploded. So actually from a November low through December and into January, you reached $50 on silver. You don't show it here, but actually there was a peak at 50. Yeah. Uh, then you may have a close only here of the spot month, but the, the active contract reached 50 bucks. This is in 19... 80 we're talking now.